would be your take on is there a good metric just to confirm to yourself that you're enough? Well, <laughs> we have the problem of two extremes here, yeah. right? Um, I was raised by a very disciplinarian authoritarian father and I think we all, or many of us, find the image of God in our minds is largely shaped by our experiences as a child living with a father. And so I grew up with that conception mm -hmm. that I was never ever going to satisfy God. And, uh, and I lived with that for a long time. Um, I think, as, I, as I've tried to say today, that it is only in coming to, to first encounter scripturally a different picture of God that Enoch gives us and that the Book of Mormon gives us. And then opening ourselves up to that possibility that we feel the presence of a different divine figure before us. I think that's the first step. At the same time, I, I agree with Alistair McIntyre, right, who in his magnificent book After Virtue thinks that, that one of the great ills of this generation, he calls it the therapeutic age, right, where, where we expend so much effort trying to firm us in where we are. No, you're, you're good, you're beautiful, you're adequate. And I want to say, no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, religion is not meant to comfort us, right? Religion is meant to unsettle us and provoke us because it's meant to elucidate the distance between who we are and what we can become. And if that's your understanding of religion, then you know it's not supposed to make you comfortable. It will always make you feel unsettled, right? Elder Maxwell used to talk about this beautifully. He used to say, we've got to find that middle ground, right, between divine discontent and the devil's dissonance. And I love that expression. So that, so that we are gentle with ourselves but then we also realize, no, there's a lot of work to be done, and let's get to it. So we've got to find that happy middle ground, I think.